you guys were here in the last video where I was doing a lot of um, winter cleanup, getting ready for winter, I'm cleaning out some bedding in the buck pen. I've been cleaning lots of our feed bowls, lots of our buckets because it's a 60 degree day. And actually while I was down here doing my chores and trying to get some of the stuff cleaned up out of the buck house, flu came down and was just kind of acting really bucky. Not uncommon for flu because he's a buck and we're in the middle towards the end of our breeding season. And he still has a lot of hormones going on in his body. And uh, it turned out like play. Then it, it kind of turned a little serious. And I'm going to issue a warning. This comes down to a normally friendly and easy to work with animal turning aggressive and me responding in the appropriate way so that the animal knows in its own body language and its own behavior that that is not acceptable. Here we go. My main purpose during this video too is to just kind of dissect what happened to go over the reasons why I reacted and also lay some groundwork and understanding as to why flu may have acted out aggressively. Because in order to solve the problem, sometimes we need to understand what caused the problem first. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't like you like that, buddy. You're a good boy. I don't like you like that. Good boy. But I'm just not feeling it that way. I forgive you because I know that you're thinking with a different brain. But you need to get out of here. You're in the way. Don't you, don't rub on me like that. I don't like that. No. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> no. Well, I guess there's a first time for everything. This has never happened with this guy, ever. This is his first year as a breeding buck. And it's really easy not to take these guys seriously because they're so small. But the truth of the matter is that even at this size, he can butt with enough force to break a leg, to break an arm. He could put me on the ground and hurt me. But that and there, what he just did, that, that, that coming at me hard, he meant to butt me really hard. And even though he's small, he's right in line with my kneecap. <laughs> like the dude can kneecap me like that. So even though these guys are small and they're worked with all the time, there are specific situations in goats where they're probably not all that safe to be around. The fact that he's invading my space like this and pretty much challenging me, that's not okay. So I'm trying to make sure I keep my body face more to him so he knows I'm bigger. And the moment he comes in too close, I'm going to make him move. Because the law of animals, especially prey animals, and you see a lot in horses, whoever makes the other one move their feet is the boss. So because if I can make him move his feet, that means I am the boss. You have to yield to me. If I take a step back from him, I'm reinforcing that he's the boss. He made me move my feet. And you can't do that with these guys. Because he's a really, really sweet dude, but I'll tell you exactly why he's acting this way. Because usually he doesn't do this at all. Number one, I'm in his space. And I'm usually not in their space for a long amount of time. But we do have does on the other side, like right behind me, that are in heat. And he can smell them. So because of that, his hormones are just really high. That's why he's talking like this. And not to mention um, goats, especially male goats, well, all goats for that reason, can smell our hormones and our pheromones. So some of my ladies, if you are in a specific time of a 30-day cycle, these guys can pick up on that and it can cause them to be erratic. So that's something really to keep in, in mind, especially if you're a female and you're tending bucks, especially intact bucks that are in the middle of rut. They're just super hypersensitive to, to anything. So... Anytime this guy comes into my space, I'm going to have to make a move. Now, I'm going to keep going on with my chores and um, just make sure that he knows to stay off of me. So, I'm probably not going to let him come too close. But the fact that he's kind of acting like this, like, he's just, he's hopped on his hormones. He, can, he can't help that. That's nature. Ah, ah, ah. No, get back. So when he stopped, and I don't know if you guys caught this, but when I stopped, 
and started to turn away, he started moving forward and I didn't want him to get that in his head that he made me move. So I had to, <laughs> I had to assert myself and make him move further away. So, and one thing I'll say too, when an animal acts like that towards you, you can't pause. You have to react immediately because most animals aren't going to sit there and think about the action that they just made and associate you coming back in two minutes with the water hose and hosing them off. That confrontation is already gone. It's already gone from their mind. They're not going to make that connection that they headbutted you, they knocked you on the ground, you got up, you retreated, they made you move your feet, you went and found a switch and came back with the switch and showed them what for. You can't do that. It has to be immediate. And it doesn't have to be with the stick or with anything the not business end of a pitchfork. It honestly can just be you running towards them and making them move their bodies. Now, if it's a bigger goat, me just running at him probably wouldn't have done anything. It may have agged it on. So you're gonna have to be able to read that situation and make a split second decision how you're going to react. Because if you, come, if you don't make a reaction right then and there to what they've done, they don't make the connection that you're running after them or you're making their feet move because they acted aggressively towards you and it was unacceptable. And like I've said, I'm gonna keep working, but I'm not going to let him move into my space or to make me move. I'm gonna let him know I have my space and he needs to stay out of it. He's small, he's easy to handle, and he's not meaning too much business, but it's also because I'm responding immediately to the, the body language and the aggression that he's showing towards me. So that's part of the reason why I'm staying in here. Now, if this were a full grown boar buck, if a boar buck were to do this to me, I would push him off enough to where I could safely get out of the fence. Um, lots of bucks are not like this at all. They are kind in rut, they are kind year round, and there are some that are kind year round until rut. And then they're the most fearsome animal ever guarding their ladies, or if there's a lady in heat and they're just really trying to assert dominance, especially because we have multiple bucks in this pen. It's really amped up on him because he is the alpha out of this group. Um, he's the, the herd king out of our, our buck group. So he's asserting to them because we've got ladies in heat, and he's asserting to me mostly because he's probably picking up on pheromones or hormones for me, and um, he's responding in kind. Now, if this were a reoccurring situation where you've got a buck that is just aggressive all the time, is always challenging you, and has actually got you afraid because you let off pheromones and hormones that signal that to the animal they can sense that there's truth when someone says don't be afraid around animals because they can smell your fear they, they literally can um so if you had a buck that was like this 100 percent of the time was always aggressive was always in your space but if he were like this 24 7 for no reason this guy would go in a freezer 100 percent, or i would sell him to someone who is looking for a halal market because that it's dangerous Honestly, when he acts like this, like, I can't have children in here because children are down here. He can butt them right in the head. He can do a lot of damage. If he gets a grown adult down and just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on, there have been um, many accounts where goats have actually killed their owners. And it's usually bucks. Bucks that are rutting or bucks that have had um, a known issue with being aggressive towards people. And I know there are going to be people in here that... Uh, you have pet goats and you would never do that. But the reason I'm going to tell you if you have a really really aggressive buck like this Not that he is an aggressive buck, but if they're like this all get get out of here get. 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 That if they're like this all of the time I don't even recommend selling them for anything but slaughter purposes because you're taking a problem that's that can be dangerous and you're giving it to somebody else. I'm not saying this is flu. Please don't take this at all that I'm saying this about flu in particular and that this is what's gonna happen to flu. Flu is a very nice, gentle animal most of the time. This is the first time that he's shown aggression. Flu is not a 100% aggressive buck, it's just rut. He's got a lot of things on the other side of that fence. He's got a lot of things for me going on that it's, it's just causing him to, to act out. The only other thing that I would think would be recommendable in this situation would be to try to actually weather your buck, to remove the hormones um, from his system so that he doesn't have a reason to act aggressively. But the thing is, if you don't react to this quickly and it becomes a habit 
it can still be a habit that's not fueled by so many hormones on your buck's part. So what's that mean for flu here on the farm? It doesn't mean anything for flu here on the farm. Flu is here for probably another year or two. Um, that's why we have multiple herd sires right now that are adding to our genetic pool. Flu has a fantastic pedigree and flu doesn't act like this unless we have girls that are in heat or he's in rut. And I'm in here doing a lot of stuff. It's stirring up a lot of smells, a lot of bucky smells here. So, I mean, he could be smelling all kinds of different things from the bedding that I'm actually picking up. Cause right now he's on the other side of the, the pen and he's making loo, like wooing faces and spitting and sputtering at the dog. Like the dog is um, receptive to his advances and she's not. So I just know he's in, in rut and doing his thing but uh, it's not tolerated. And if you ever have a buck that moves towards you in an aggressive way, you either need to make sure that you make them move and understand that you're in charge, or you need to get out of the fence. You need to get out of the pen. You need to get somewhere safe and um, assess your situation and assess that specific buck. So never fear. He's not going to a halal market. He's not going in the freezer. He's not going anywhere. He's literally here doing what bucks do. And it's just having one of those days. <laughs> So while he's having one of those days, I'm going to go back to what I was doing. But the whole purpose of me filming this and sharing it with you guys is to show you that even miniature goats, you have to take animals seriously when they act aggressively towards you, even these small goats, because they have a hierarchy. They speak physically. They speak through head butting, um, running other goats off. I mean, and bucks in rut can fight to the death. They're just like any other animal. When it comes to the right to breed, they will fight to the death. So for right now, I'm just going to make sure he knows he's not allowed in my space while I'm doing my work. I'm going to get back to my work. And, um, once I'm done, he can go back to trying to woo the ladies through the fence without me in here. So I hope you guys learned something from that today. And I also wanted to share my perspective on if you have an aggressive buck, the steps that honestly I would take because truly aggressive bucks are a hazard. They are a liability. And while they can serve their purposes as herd sires, as great breeders, putting kids on the ground for you, creating more meat for your freezer, um, creating milk for you or others to consume, there, there is a limit to where you want to allow um, behavior like that to go. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope that you learned something. If not, let me know what you thought about the situation. If you've dealt with aggressive animals, specifically goats, um, running bucks, let me know how you handled it down in the comments below. If you don't agree with me, let me know down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to, to have conversations with people that don't agree with my viewpoint, but I'm also not going to allow any of my animals to cause bodily harm to myself or anybody else. And that's what today's about. So hope y'all are staying safe out there and being kind to one another, but I'm gonna catch you the next one. God bless y'all. I know we're usually buddies, but you're being a butthead. <laughs>